Hello everybody, Sandra Delaja here from Kiev, Ukraine. I want to use this opportunity to welcome all of you to our program. And the program is uh, Creative and Innovative Hour. The topic of today is Developing Indigenous Beauty and Cosmetic Industry in Nigeria. Uh, you know, I just want to commend this wonderful couple. They, have actually, they are actually showing us what life in diaspora is supposed to be and how every Nigerian diaspora is supposed to actually behave, how we are supposed to uh, condition ourselves in relation to our own countries. These people left Africa, uh, come to Europe, came to Europe, and they discovered that they would not just live and die in Europe without impacting Africa, without living a life of impact. They were tired of living for Uncle Sam, just like most of us live. It's a sad life when you are just living to work, 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 and pay bills. And all your life in Europe or America is just in paying bills. So these people decided to see what is it that we have in Africa. What is it that we could use the riches of experience and the knowledge we have gained in Europe? What is it we could take from Europe back to Africa to make Africa a better place? And what is it that we have in Africa that we could package to sell in Europe and work for ourselves, work for our destiny and our purpose instead of working for Uncle Sam and being a slave of the system where you would never be recognized? She started, uh, another she started, she So, uh, so today I am very, very happy to present to you people who have taken it upon themselves to develop an indigenous beauty and cosmetic industry in Nigeria and Africa using 100% indigenous raw materials, product, and then building it into, a, into an industry that will be able to eventually compete with the world brands. So these people are taking up the challenge on themselves to build a brand, a beauty brand, cosmetic brand for Nigeria. I so much admit, I admire them. And, and this will be an opportunity for everybody that is out there that maybe has the money, but doesn't have the idea, doesn't know where to invest. A lot of people write me all the time. They want to find out where to invest their money. Well, this is one of the opportunities here to build and launch something new and something that will definitely work out to uh, outrun the, the, the foreign uh, products that are taking over our country. So let me just... Uh, Introduce to you immediately the, uh, this, the leader, the speaker. Unfortunately, the husband is not here, but she herself is a, she's a powerhouse. So she, she, she's a leader and she knows exactly what's happening and she'll be able to do the work for the whole family today. Nikki Christian, how are you doing today? Hi, Pastor Sunday. Hello. Yeah. I'm so happy to be here. You're looking you great. <laughs> you, you, are, you are blushing. Yeah. <laughs> you look very so good. You, you look yeah. great. How are you doing? Fine, thank you, Pastor Sunday. I'm fine. I face um, Pastor Sunday family, PSA family. Yes. Hello, everyone. Yeah, everybody is happy to see you. But well, tell us your story. Who is Nikki Christian? Well, my name is Nikki Christian. I'm a wife, a mother of three. I study economic management in the um, United Kingdom. I also have a BQ in mental health awareness and also drugs awareness. Um, before I go to my story today, I would like to first and foremost say a big thank you to Pastor, to God. God is the ultimate. To say a big thank you to God for bringing Pastor Sunday our way is, is a big, is a long story. I've been following Pastor Sunday now for the past three years. 
And I could tell you our life has really changed tremendously, if not because of God that brought Pastor Sunday on our way. And I, to be honest with you, I may say something very selfish today. And I, I hope that people will understand. And I hope I'll be able to explain myself much better so that people will be able to understand what I'm about to say. Is that the reason why Pastor Sunday is still in Ukraine is because of somebody like me, somebody like you, and somebody like and somebody that will be watching this program in the future. There is a reason why Pastor Sunday was is still there, but obvious by God's grace, definitely all the demons that is fighting him, you get you will definitely overcome them. Amen. But he has to still be there just because of somebody like me. I would say to you that I've been looking for answers for so many years. I've been playing religion. I've been going to church every single time. I waste most of my time going to church. And sometimes inside me, when I go to church, I never knew I have so much enemy because what we normally think about is about the facing um, enemies, trying to rob God or trying to just sowing, 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 sowing. It's all about somebody one person focus on one person which is the pastor and when i what well, that day i was in my mind is just too much i i was i'm just always vexing inside of me because i wanted more god has been taking jesus has been taken away from the church it's all about the pastor about self-praise about wanting to be god for people just to focus on them alone and my husband and I keep on talking about this. Then I was thinking probably my husband and I, we are rebellious. We, we have problems or we are weird people. But not until I, 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 I because to be honest with you, every time, especially on social media, I it got to a point whereby I stopped going to church because every single time we go to church, it's just the same old story every day. Sugar coating, preaches and everything every single day. Not until that day I was I was um, flicking through past, um, the social media, and this man came up, which uh, the Sunday came up. He was then he was pastor before he changed. To me. And any time, and this is the pastor Sunday. Any time I see something P A S T O R coming up on social media, you know, pastors, this is me. I just keep flicking. I just don't pay two seconds or three seconds to even. To even listen to any of the pastors because it's the same old story every day. But when I just know that's why I said I'm giving God the thing, I'm praising God for making me to be so patient that the pastor. What you're thinking that I'm saying here, it is something that I'm really passionate about. Because if I did not, if God did not orchestrate this, for me to be patient enough that day to listen. And when your when your video came up, if you remember, I was part of the first group of people where you started teaching this life program. I was, you know, part of the group. And when your video came up and I saw Pastor Sunday at the lodge, I was like, oh, here we go again. What's this one going to say? But because that day, I don't know if because of the way you were dressed, you know, Pastor, you always have this colorful clothing and you know your bow tie i don't know maybe that was what drew me to you for me to be have for me to have that patience that it just <laughs> listen to what you're about and i was like oh what is this one going to say again let's hear at least he's dressing slick he's dressing nice let's hear what he's going to say this time but i was patient enough that day and i heard what you're about to say and this is me for good 30 seconds my mouth was just wide open what was coming out of your mouth. And immediately I just rang my husband and I said, only something had happened in the house. You need to come and listen to this man called the Pastor Sunday Adelaja. And my husband said, oh, I remember, I've heard that name somewhere before. The church, before, before me and my husband got married, he said, I've heard that name before. My pastor had mentioned that name before. And I said, please, I don't care what pastor say, just go and listen to what he's teaching because then he, they just mentioned it, but it was, we weren't following your teaching. Not until when we started following your teaching, our life just went like that. All what we've been discussing, because it's just like somebody confirming 
something that's in my heart, especially my husband. So that's why I said, you are my husband. You just need to meet each other because you both have the same thing in common. To be honest with you, the same kind of, you know, way of talking and preaching, the same way that is how my husband is. What, so but when you, you be, your husband is not a Nigerian. My husband is not Nigerian. Yeah, he's a foreigner. So you being a typical Nigerian person, being brought yes, up sir. in Nigerian church, didn't you think, were you not suspicious of your husband that, hey, maybe, oh, go, go, no. Maybe I married the wrong person when he started saying this. <laughs> the way, to be honest, my husband makes a lot with Nigerians. He has so much Nigerian friends. He was he was saying to me he, um, when I said when I said that to him he said yeah I told you didn't I you thought maybe <laughs> I was talking or being too English or something that look this is what I've been saying to you that it is just about me 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 and focus on one person because if you are a pastor you have to be a service you have to be servicing people not people servicing you you have to be a service to people. And that is why I said, well, thank God that I have seen better now. And so, I haven't said that. reason why we went ahead to start doing something, to change and transform our life, is also the experience that myself and my husband, my husband also went through. It's our, our son. Before then, I remember um, when we just had him, it was... He was a normal child, normal baby. There was nothing wrong with him. His skin was perfect. There was nothing wrong. Not until when he clocked two years old and he, he just started developing some skin, some skin problem. So when I was hearing your messages that saying that you have to develop your time, you have to manage your time, don't keep on wasting your time on something that is not productive. It now drew me back. I remember vividly growing up when my dad used to say to us that study to create something, study to be a, to be an employer, not an employee. Create jobs for people. So that when you now start saying, because when my father used to say, then I was like, "What's daddy saying? This is old school. I'll just go there, study, get a good job, and then start." But when I started hearing it from, you know, sometimes they will say, "Prophet has no honor. Is this or at home?" And when I started hearing it from somebody like you, and I was like, that is exactly what my daddy was also saying back home, even when I was still young, because I don't really know much then. But I was hearing it from you. You have to create something, and that really triggered inside of me. So, continue with my son. My son now developed this skin issue. I took him to the doctors, doctors refer us back to the dermatologist. And the dermatologist diagnosed my son of, um, to have um, atopic eczema, which is a very, atopic eczema is um, an inflammation in the skin that causes itchiness, redness, swelling, that you, the child, you just be scratching as if you're going to scratch your skin off. So they gave him, um, they gave him uh, um, cream, they gave him body wash, but nothing was working, sir. Nothing was working. So that day, I had this family friend in the church. I saw her son, her son's skin was so perfect. There was nothing wrong with the son's skin. It was so beautiful. So I asked her, I said to her that, please, my son, um, the thing, my son just started developing um, some skin issue, but they've diagnosed him with atopic eczema. Now, is there any cream that this cream that your son is using? Can you introduce me to it and everything? He said, Yeah, she bought them in from Nigeria. That I also, our son also have eczema. That she would give me some after maybe the following Sunday. So, the following Sunday, she brought about five tubes for me and she told me how to use it. So when I got collected the cream from her, I brought it home. I didn't tell my husband, Pastor, and I know you'll be hearing it now. I pressed <laughs> some of this because she told me that to take some out, mix it with shea butter, right? And now she started using it for my son. And to be honest with you, it was working. It was working? I, it was working. The cream was working. So... But along the line, about three months to five months that I was using that cream, 
I started I started um, seeing changes in my son's skin that his skin started getting very thin. As in, it was thin, and there was a lot of um, what's it called? There was a lot of um, lot of um, scratches. No, even scratches. A um, lot of veins, green veins, started coming out of his skin. It was so of it was so bad. And I was like, I now called and I said, so one of my friends came to the house that day and I was now showing her that, oh, please, um, look at my son's skin. Look at what, um, look at her, uh, his, uh, his skin. Look at the, uh, somebody gave me the cream. And she said, oh, let me see the, the cream. So when I showed her the cream, she just said, Nikki, are you so ignorant? This cream has really almost put somebody in London to jail. Because this cream, don't you know this cream came from India? If this cream was so good, why didn't they bring it to somewhere like Europe, America, and other places? Why is it that it's in Africa? So I got so afraid now. And I started Googling about this cream, Pastor Sunday. The ingredient in this cream, you're not supposed to use because normally I found that there was thyroid in the cream. And part of the ingredient in the skin, inside the Part of the ingredient inside this cream, you are not supposed to use it for for a long period of time because it could act, it could actually cause kidney problem. Ooh. So you imagine I've been using this stuff for the past three to five months before I because normally if they give you steroid cream in United Kingdom right here, the minimum you can use a steroid cream is seven days, maximum is two weeks, which is fourteen days. You are not supposed to use it, but I've been using it consistently three to five months. Hmm. So the mother also almost also got into trouble. The other women, the woman that was using the cream for the for her son almost got into trouble. And I I I I also fell into such victim. So until I just took every one of them, I binned them and I went back to my GP. Obviously I couldn't tell them I was use I was you know using something Unprescribed for me because that thing you are not supposed to use it for so long. And those things is not because when they, when one of the mothers that use this thing, they caught her from our GP here. They asked her to bring the cream she was using for her son. When she brought the cream, they almost put her in. She almost got into trouble because she was not supposed to use that cream for so long. And she, the cream is not even supposed to be used. Because all the ingredients in that cream is, is not is not supposed to be touched on normal people. So can you imagine how long some of we parents, even though sometimes we need and we want to help our children because of their skin issues and everything, we just want to just solve the problem, even if they are whatever skin problems, even be we facing it, not our children. And I think that was how ignorant I was then. Before I now started seeking other moms, I joined into a group and I was asking them, this is what my son is going through, this is our skin, um, this is what his skin is. What? And some of them said, there's nothing they can give you at the GP, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not going to work. I have turned into, all the moms who are not giving me their testimonies, now I have turned into using natural products. I don't use anything chemicals anymore whatsoever. And please, if you can show, if you can show the video and um, the photos of my son when the skin was photography. I don't know if the photo is the photo, the photo of your son. Yes. The, when, when the skin, the skin was, when the skin problem was there, right? Yeah. When I stopped using the cream, when I stopped using the cream, and that is what happened to his skin. This is how his skin was when I. When I started, um, when I stopped it, immediately I knew what problems that could cause for him in the future. That I stopped it, and his skin went so bad. It went bad. And it went so bad. Like you, that, that cream. You are not so. To be honest with you, it's not a good cream at all. And I know I don't want to call the name of the cream because of you know controversial. So, I don't want so to. this is what happened to the to the skin of your son. Yes. Wow. That was what exactly happened to his skin. So I stopped. So the thing got worse. It became much worse than even before you started using it. Exactly. That is exactly what happened. And what I, what as a mom, what I supposed to have done, 
I suppose to probably check what is eaten. Is food is eaten? Is 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 allergic to men is to stuff? There was a day I gave him fish. Is allergic to fish. No, okay, now we are seeing another. We are seeing another picture now that is maybe it is now, but maybe now, we should show yeah. that later on, eh? You will yes. tell us when to show that. Nina da pakai to pakai Okay. That is his skin but, before. Yeah. We, okay. So you want us to show when the, you stop using the? Yeah, yes. it's this one. When I stop using the cream, okay. that is what in his skin, his skin became even worse than before. Hmm. So that was what happened. And when I took him back to the doctors, they had to also do allergy tests for him. And they saw that he was allergic because there was a day he ate a fish called red snapper. And every, every mom and dad watching me today, please always pay attention to what our children are eating. Because sometimes what they are eating could also contract or contribute to every skin issues that we are going through. Hmm. And this red snapper, the day he ate the red snapper, Pastor Sunday, his, 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 his um, neck went inflamed. His face was inflamed. All of all of his bodies was inflamed, and that was called red snapper. So doctors did the um, allergy test on him. He's not. He's never going to eat that again because it's not. It's, you know, it doesn't agree to his body. So I had to eliminate fish out of his diet. Dairy product. It doesn't take any dairy product. So we had to constitute because children need milk. So we had to constitute to using coconut milk. So if you check inside my house today, we don't use any dairy product at all because of him. So we are using coconut oil to, you know, to eat, to take our cereal. That is the only thing we coconut use. Coconut milk. Coconut milk, yes, sir. Okay. We had to substitute it from fresh milk because fresh milk causes more allergy to trigger his eczema. So we try as much as possible to eliminate anything dairy product into his into his diet so that is that is that then so um and another thing that i would like to mention is um so after that after the um i started to um look at to make sure i'm checking the food is eating on a daily basis so and when I you know, stop using that, uh, so or cre is it soap or cream? Cream. It's the cream. When cream. you stop using that cream, did you begin yes. to use another one or not immediately? I when I when I been all those ones, I went back to the the GP. They gave me some product to use, but they were not working. So that was when I turned to some of the moms. I formed a moms group. To tell which whichever have experience with their kids, what did they use and everything. So majority of them said it, you know, they all turned to natural natural, mm -hmm. natural product. So I started doing experiments in my home. I started mixing A and B and C together to create something. So when I started doing that, doing natural skin product for my son, I started seeing changes in his skin, and that is now when I started using my own product. I started the product for my kitchen. I was mixing ABC together to, you know, I, to be honest with you, if you don't go through something, you'll not be able to discover some things. So to be honest with you, I personally, I would say, I will say to my son in picture, I would say I use him as a guinea pig, to be honest with you, for me to be able to find solution to, to, to the problem he was going through. So after I, I started, when I now start seeing, when I'm using, natural, when I started using natural skincare for him, changes was, obviously the changes was so superb. It was superb. So because I wanted to know more, I had to enroll myself into a natural skincare school in London. So I went on there, I was, you know, I was going to the school to go, to go and learn more about natural skin. I just want to eliminate chemicals whatsoever in any things that we are using. So that, that very faithful day, that very faithful day, our, our, um, we were doing, 
they, we had a course that we wanted to do, which they, it was African Black Soul. So that day, I and one of the ladies, we were just two African people in, the, in our class. The rest are from Asia, from, from America, and British. So we were just the two African people. But because we were two African, and they said to us that to come and explain about African Black Soul. I only you should know come and Africa. explain? To come and tell everyone about African Black Soul. How do they know about African Black Soul? This, the person who taught me how to make African Black Soul, Pastor, is an European woman. It's not possible. I I'm can't believe it. Af African Black Soap, the one my grandmother used to use for me in the village. Pastor Sunday, I'm telling you. I'm, you, know, you, you. You mean Europeans know about it? Of course, sir. They do. The one we the one we threw away and embraced the chemical one. I'm telling you, sir. You don't know what benefit that Africa, what African black soap is. It's, it, you don't know how unique African black soap is. Because even she was saying to me, she take heart off. Because African black soap is one of the safest. Because Af because if one something that if you don't she know, make it, oh, she make it. Something that if we don't know, until somebody, until another race embrace what we have, before we'll be able to appreciate what we got, what we get, what we have. So they were country. asking you now, since you are two Africans there, to come and explain to them. They didn't and know I that have, you have been European, Europeanized. And I have no clue because, sir, sir I don't, I didn't then, before I knew what I know now. I don't use it. I don't use no, it. But Nikki, I didn't why, why didn't you I, brought up in Nigeria? Yes, but I never. I was brought up in Nigeria, sir. You are not I brought, never, maybe you are not brought up in the village. No, sir. I, li I lived all my life in Lagos. Ah, you are a city girl. Yes, yeah, so I didn't. I didn't <laughs> you are one of the ones that have been Europeanized. <laughs> so, so I didn't really know anything about African black. So when I felt so embarrassed that day, and the woman had to say to me, Nikki, you don't have to be embarrassed. And they asked the other lady, she has no clue as well. So maybe she's a city lady like me, I don't know. So she, she, Is she, she Nigerian too? She is a Nigerian as well. So they now, she now started explaining to us how African black soap is made. She taught us in the class there because we had to do the A European side. lady was teaching you how black African soap is made? Yes, sir. But in a very, in a very subtle and uh, European, European way of making African black soap, because of the regulation in this country, the way our mamas do it back home is not allowed here. So, but she substitute by showing us how it is. No, made but what she, a, what did she tell you about this black African black soap in the first place? What was she? What did she? What did she even get to know about it? What did she say about it? What is unique about it? African black soap does a lot of things, Pastor. Africa, because there's a lot of controversy, and we is in between we Africans. We think African black soap because there was a day I was having a conversation with one of you know one of my customers, and I was telling her you need to use African black soap. It's very good. Is there? She said ah she can't use African black soap because she's a very fair. She said she's going to make her dark, but what she doesn't know because I also I would feel the same way, but not until I knew what I know now. Because majority of us, the controversial things, the debate out there is that, oh, African black soap, because it's black, it's going to make my skin black and things. But African black soap has so much, so much good benefits. You know, I used, to, I used to make it, I used to see my grandmother make it. And when I was okay. very, very small, I could make it too. But now, I don't even have an idea again. I forgot. It's, it's, person is very, very, is a unique, look, I will keep on, you know, show, tell um, um, things, um, list of the things African black soap do. It cleanses the skin because of it has antibacterial in it, antibacterial properties. Um, African black soap is made from plants, sir. Yes. It's made from plants, from banana skin. Yes. From kernel, coconut yes. oil, shea butter, all those things. It depends on the manufacturer. Who are the people manufacturing it? They mix it and becomes a unique to become a unique product. If in an, if some um, depends on what and what people are, are adding to it. 
But the main property, the main ingredient of African black soap is banana skin. Yes. So African black soap it helps you know to get it cleanses the skin. It helps people with sensitivities, people who have sensitive skin. For you to know how it's not harsh on the skin compared to the soaps that we buy in stores. You understand? Yes. It also helps with blemishes and takes away dark spots. It fights acne, those who have acne on their face, on the body and everything else. And it also helps to exfoliate your skin. Some people who, who use, uh, you, you, we will find that some people use African black soap. Sometimes it's um, maybe um, if, if they are not allergic to cocoa. Because you know that some people are allergic to cocoa, some people cannot take chocolate. Wow. So those kind of things. You know, you really have people, human beings living in this world who can't who eat chocolate. <laughs> who are allergic to chocolate. Them. Then they mean so. <laughs> <laughs> they are losing out though. The some reason people in this world have never eaten chocolate before. <laughs> Any, anything that is cocoa, some people are allergic to, to it. So you have to know your body. You have to know what you, you so know. So if they're in Nigeria, to... they cannot take bone vita. Like me now, sir. If I, use, if I take bone vita past Sunday, it gives me bones. Okay. Maybe because it's too rich. I just it just triggers me like that. I just start to get you know. So in Nigeria, just, you are not taking bone vita. No, sir. <laughs> it triggers it. Tri it it makes me um, break out. Maybe because it's too rich. Wow. It's too rich. So that's the that's the thing. So why is why is our product um? Unique? So what are the other things that the black soup soap does? Yes, I've, I've mentioned that it fights acne, it fights it body acne and um, facial acne, it exfoliates your skin. But some of us who we have a lot of dry, uh, dead skin cells, if we want to get rid of dead skin cells, back black so dead skin the, cells. Yes, you know the, we have three layers of skin, Pastor Sunday. We have the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. The dead skin cells, the epidermis is the top layers of the skin. So sometimes if we want newer skin, we need to get rid of the top layers of the skin to get new skins out. So if you are using you mean, black soap... You mean I could be walking around now and I don't even know that I have dead skin somewhere? Yeah, there's, dead skin cells. there's dead skin cells on the top surface of the... Uh, on the top layers of the skin. So we have to exfoliate. So if it's dead now, how will I know? Physically, you may not be able to see it, but when they use maybe like a... Um, hey, whoa! You mean some people are walking around with dead skin that they don't know? Dead skin cells, yeah. Top layers of the skin, and then you have... Because human beings, we normally <laughs> shed dead skin every seven days, Pastor Sunday. Majority of us don't know this. We normally shed skin. We shed skin. You know the way snake, you know, shed their skin off and things like that? Human being does the same way as well. So you see that that dead skin, that layers, we just sit down there because of the suns, because of, you know, toxins out there, things we eat sometimes and things like that. It will just stay on the top surface of the skin. But if you don't get something to scrub it off, we sometimes we use scrub. But the best thing for us to use is African black soap. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm promoting African black soap, but African black soap is actually very good and it is safe. Is it one of your products now? Sir? Is it not one of your products now? Yes, yes, it is. And one so of why do you say you will not promote it? <laughs> yes, I'm saying so, yeah. You've got it's to promote it best, now. Yes, it's one of the best one of the best soap to exfoliate your skin. Majority of us out there using cream and you're thinking, oh my God, I've been using this cream for a long time and this cream is not working for me all you need to do is to exfoliate you need to exfoliate your skin so that the new layers of skin will be able to come to surface to be able to come to surface and that's why you need african black soap you need not african black soap to be able to get rid of dead skin cells for you to you know to have new layers of skin out and now that you are talking about dead skin cell i yes, wonder sir. How will you explain to me, okay, especially with, you know, with our girls, 
with our yeah. Europe, you know, black women who live in Europe. Uh, yes. I started noticing this when I was in the university. A lot yes. of the African girls that came here to study, after some time, and now I see it, people that come, that I see who come, because we don't have a lot of black people here, but the ones I see that come from England and come from America to visit, to be here, I see that at the time, after they've been in Europe for 10, 20 years, that their skin, they are, either it dries up or, but especially yeah. of the hand, you see they are, it's becoming blacker and it's deep, exactly. blacker than their skin and it's becoming yes. rough, a bit like that. Yeah. And I would just wonder why is it that this weather, because the way I was, it was explained to me by the African girls that I talked to is that the weather, that is the cold, that is making their skin change color. But they use cream as well a lot. They use a lot of cosmetics and cream. And I was wondering, is it because of the cosmetics there? I'm thinking it's because of the cosmetics that they use, because I'm also black, and my hand is not changing color like that. It's not becoming, but they use a lot of cream. And I was wondering, is it because of the cream? So do you know, I don't know if you know the thing kind of thing I'm talking about. There are some, you know, black people, they have their skin changed. Are you aware of this? Of course, Pastor Sunday. Um, let me explain one. If, if some of us, we have this, you know, um, dark knuckles. Yeah. Right? Um, what causes dark knuckles sometimes? Because especially the mothers. Okay, in the kitchen, cause, the water washing in the kitchen or things like that. Yes. What, one thing that majority of us do not understand is that when we use too much of hot water, okay. you understand? You are, you are, we are working with our hands every single day, washing the plates, because it's not everybody no, that No, but in Africa, have, people don't have that. Ah, they don't use hot water in Africa. They don't use hot water. And also, sir, another thing that could cause it, it is the, the soap liquid we use as well. Soap. So imagine, yes, yeah, soap liquid. We use soap liquid to wash plates, to wash our dishes. Okay. Sometimes, if you use cream, let's say all those um, creams that is made with chemical substances. Yes. Now, okay, now most of, most of the industrial, most of the industrial soaps that are coming from the West, they are chemical now. That's I'll get I'll get to that side, sir. I'll get to that side. The cream sometimes we. Without, because before I don't know all those things. You know, sir, when you go to the shop, majority of us can testify to this. There are some chemicals that you can't even pronounce. Mm -hmm. You understand? So those chemicals are mixed together. So if you cream your hand now and go to the kitchen to go and wash plates, you know, wash your dishes. Yes. Then you have cream in your hand and then you use your washing liquid. Okay. There will be a chemical reaction. I think that is it. A chemical reaction we burn the skin without us knowing that. Hmm. You can see that the 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 knuckles became darker and darker because we don't know that. Because we don't know that, then because we don't know that, then we will not be instead of us to be instead of yeah, instead of us to be exfoliating, we do not exfoliate. To get rid of those dead skin cells that the chemical reaction has really caused damages to the skin. Now, sir, you mentioned about soaps that the commercial soaps use. I remember one time our lecturer did say to us that the soaps that the shop, you know, manufacturer, the big boys, you know, people manufacturer, they do, they are not supposed to be labeled as soap. They are supposed to be called detergents. And I'll give you the reason why it's supposed to be called detergent. What we do is soap, because we we mix um, bottles and oil together to and um, alkaline, alkaline and you know fatty fatty acid and things that are mixed together. That is what becomes soaps. But what manufacturer? Alkaline, do, alkaline are healthy. That is the healthy stuff. That is. In alkaline, which is sodium hydroxide, sir. Yes. Sodium hydroxide. Yes. yes. Sodium hydroxide mixed with fatty acid. They form, it becomes soap. I remember there was a story back in the days. Even in the Bible, Bible mentioned about uh, soaps in the Bible. And the soap in the Bible is called, uh, I think it was called uh, Borit. Borit, Bible. Um, mentioned borrowed in the Bible, which has been translated to soap. Okay. Now, what they do is that if you mix 
fatty acids together with sodium hydroxide, there is a chemical reaction and it becomes soap. Mm. You understand? Back in the days, you know, I think ancient Babylonians, they were the first people who first of all, according to research that I did, they were the first people who first of all detected what soap is because they were mixing. Sometimes some of the people, they wash, they wash. Uh, but this one I'm looking at, are they soaps or they are fruits? Which one, sir? I can't see I'm the looking video. at something. Are you not seeing yourself now? I'm seeing myself, but I can't see the video. You are, you are not seeing the video. No. It will come on now. Uh, you are not seeing the screen. I can see you, but I can't see the video. Oh, sorry. But look, this, this thing, I'm looking at the picture now. Okay. With some very beautiful, like the color I'm wearing now. Uh, like this pink pink soap or either they are soap or are they fruits that is that is bad bombs what bad bad bombs okay <laughs> yeah that is bad bomb i'll get i'll get to you'll that get one there well. okay okay <laughs> so i want to bring a point out pastor sunday why our soap is different from the soaps that you could buy because we could go to store you can buy 20 piece soap you can buy 50 piece soap. Yes, it's, it's there. But why our soap is unique is because we are using oil and butter. It's like you're bathing, and then you don't even have to be rushing to say you want to come and cream your cream. And I'll give you the example why soaps that you can buy in stores is different and is different from our own is that. Um, if you you know, sir, when you wash soap, soaps ladders. But what commercial soaps? In order for this for the production to be cheap, they use sodium lauryl sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate is SLS. SLS is a foaming agent that actually helps us to get that ladder effect. But in our own case, we use coconut oil to get ladder. So if you are using if you are using um, our soap, it does not it will not strip your skin. It will not strip your skin the same the way those soaps does to your skin because I discover also when some people wash their skin, right? They will start the moment they come out of the after the um, out of the bathroom what, out of the bathroom they will start itching. This is caused by sodium lauryl sulfate because sodium lauryl sulfate actually retaining the skin. It exposes us to, to chemicals out there. So anybody could also go and Google and see what has, you know, what are SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate does to the skin. It's not good you. You know, I don't have to go into details, but if you Google yourself, you'll be able to know what this does. But in order for us not to allow people to be getting this kind of things, we use our we use coconut oil to get that ladder effect that shops or manufacturers are doing so we use that as a substitute so people will not be getting that kind of uh, skin problems that they are doing and another thing that the reason why our soap is different from every other soaps out there is that we retain we retain um what's it called crystalline in our soaps and I even forgot to say, if, um, if the team can show when I went to Africa, because I had to go to Africa to learn how African black soap was made in a unique way. Okay. Yes, I went to Africa to go and learn how it is done. Because without, because I learned the European way of doing it, and I had to go to the original, the original way of making African black soap. And if you see what these women are doing, they are really trying. They are doing fantastic things. But fantastic. they are not exporting. They are not exporting it. Are they exporting it? No. Um. Some. Some. I don't. I don't. I, I didn't ask them. I just went there as a student to go and and also promote that community. You understand? So I also. I just went there. So to these are the women, eh? Yes, sir. These are the women. So that is me, although I can't see the video, that is me trying to, you know, have a go to see how African black soap is made. I was trained how it is made, what and what they use, and everything is planned. 
is oil, everything is plant and things. So after I learned that, I had to... Everything is natural. It's natural. Everything is natural. The, uh, we are playing the video now. Yes, yes, sir. So everything is natural. There's no uh, chemicals that after using it, because right now we would not know, we can't, with, uh, with our naked eyes, we would not be able to see all those damages all those soaps are doing in stores, all those soaps we buy in stores, what they are doing, because they had to make it a cheap way for it to be affordable for everyone to buy. Your company is called Notch Jenny. Notch, Notch. Notch. Yes. Then Notch. you have, what is not Notch Genuine? Genuine. Yeah, no, that is, is a genuine African black soap. You know, I said, I, I mentioned that they do it in a funky, British way of making African black soap. And also, I had to also go and do the traditional method. So we are doing it in a traditional way to make African black soap. So that's why I said it's the genuine one, the genuine African black soap. Yeah. So can I continue talking? Sir? Yes, yes, please. Yes. So um so I so the the difference between the um, griseline, I'm, I'm talking about griseline. So what commercial soap does, majority of us may not know, I also did not know this before. They, when Af during the production of making African, during the production of making soap, generally, the strips, they, they, they remove um, griseline out of the soap and resell it back to us. So the griseline now, Griseline, what does the what does griseline do? Griseline is very good. It's 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 just like a magnet. And uh, griseline, you know, draws moisture from hair. It draws moisture from hair to our skin. So griseline is very important to be, you know, to apply on our skin. So if you have that in your soap, you don't so, to be honest with you, you will not be having that, you know, those dry feelings we normally experience when we use commercial soaps and things like that, we will not be able to experience such. But in the manufacturing, in the big, you know, the other way of making soap that the commercial soap does is they strip it out, they take it out, they extract it out, and they resell it back to people who make cream. That is what they put back into our creams, creams that we use, because it's another way of making money. But in our own, we leave it in there, we don't take it out. We leave it there. So. When you finish washing your body with it, you don't have to be running and say, well, I have to clean my body or your skin becomes dry. We leave it there and it actually helps to, you know, pull out moisture, like I said, pull out moisture from hair. And that is why our soap is very different from every other soaps out there. And to mention as well, during the time that I was in Nigeria, we were looking for, um, we were looking for, uh, companies that does coconut oil. There was no. It's not that there was none, but if you if you if you compare in uh, here that I live in UK, I could just type coconut oil and you see thousands of companies coming up. They sell coconut oil. Remember, sir, they don't grow coconut oil here, but they are able to bring it here. So we don't lack any coconut oil. So I thought it was going to be the same way I would get it in Nigeria, but when I type in coconut oil, just for me to be able to see com companies doing coconut oil, I find that that is not much. Even if you, even if you get companies that do coconut oil, it's not in a very large quantity. That way that you'll be able to say, okay, you're closing about it. I want to buy in a very large volume, to you know, to because we use a lot of coconut oil in our products. You understand? So you will not be able to get those things. So I had to also learn how to make coconut oil. So, you know, so in order for me, because sir, I only buy from those mamas just to encourage them as well. And I discovered that if all these mamas are doing this coconut oil, it's not, always not enough. And I know I'm getting something very good, and that is organic, real organic coconut oil. But because also them is a very tiring thing, it's a very tiring process. And when I was Googling for Sunday, I had to look for which are the top companies or countries that does coconut oil. Indonesia. Indonesia do about 18 million tons of coconut oil in a year. Philippines. Philippines do 15 million. 
India 11 million, Brazil 12 million, uh, Brazil is 2 million, Mexico do about 1 million, Thailand do 1 million, Malaysia do 663,000 tons of coconut oil per year. But I was expecting my African, you know, to be able to be at the top of this because we all also have coconut oil in Africa. But the only people who came, Tanzania came up. Tanzania do about 530 tons per year. Ghana was 366, but I did not see Nigeria there. So that also triggers a lot of things in me that, well, this is another opportunity for me to be able to also so if other people as well that wants to be doing coconut oil, that wants to get coconut oil, we can also be able to be doing coconut oil. That's the reason why we also started manufacturing coconut oil as well. What is so the difference I, between this soap? So how many products do you people manufacture? Black soap, coconut yes, oil, what are the things you do? We do black soap, we do coconut oil, we also do bar soap, normal plain bar soaps. Okay. Yes, because cocoa um, is the same, mo um, is mostly the same processing of making soaps. But the reason why African black soap is different because of the cocoa pod in African black soap. Cocoa pod is inside it. So that's the reason why it's different from the normal black soap, um, the normal bar soaps we do. So we have, right now, we still have a lot of products to bring up. We have, we have black soap. We have normal bar soaps, we have coconut oil, we also have bad bombs. And bad bombs, we are the first people to bring bad bomb into Nigeria at present. Because when are I they went your, to Are they your products? Yes, sir, it's our product. Wow. It's our product. And what bad bombs does, bad bombs. Can you show some of those bad, uh, bad bombs? Bad bombs also help to help exfoliate as well. It helps to exfoliate. And there's a video there. You know, some people were giving me this in our church. But, you yeah. know, being a village boy that I am from Edomila, I remember the way I used to manage that soap for a month at least so that it would be enough. So now <laughs> these people are bringing me uh, bath bombs. And I just put in the, the water like the church. <laughs> Everything yeah. finished. I said, oh, whoa. no, <laughs> I don't go waste money like this. Oh, uh -uh. how can the thing, how can I just put the thing like this and the thing disappear? This thing that waste of money, oh. that's how I stop using the thing. No, it's, it's like it's I'm actually... putting cash in fire like this. She, everything just disappear. But sometimes, but something we have to relax our skin, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the way that is the purpose that's what it's meant for yes it's it's like it takes out every every toxic in the skin so let's as because some of us use a uh, salt bath you know we soak ourselves in salt maybe yes. sea salt oh yeah yes. but i don't yes. do so it so i just had a woman do it <laughs> let me wash my hand from it you have to be, you have to take care of your skin sometimes. You have to, you know, it's very, very important. <laughs> so it is very important. So why, you have you know, one of the things also is that they, I also noticed that the five star, when I used to travel a lot, in those five star yeah. hotels, they used to have these uh, bad bombs in the, in their, the yeah, in their such, you know, bath, bathrooms. Yeah. So yes. maybe you could supply Nigerian uh, hotels, especially those, yeah. they, they, they said they have a lot of five star hotels now in Nigeria. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Because I know somebody who is a friend of mine who supplies coconut. No, he used to use the, this, there is this big hotel in Abuja they call Nung, Nung, uh, New, Hilton um, something. Hil, Hilton uh, Nuga. Nuga. Anyway, it's a big hotel in Lake in Abuja. It's called Hilton. Hilton, Hilton, Hilton. Is it Hilton Hotel? Yes, it's Hilton, but it has a, a name added, added to it in, in Abuja. That, okay. No, no. Hilton uh, Nuga something. You know, okay. uh, something. It has a name. Everybody in Abuja knows it. It's the okay. biggest hotel in Lake, in Abuja. I'm talking of Abuja. It's the biggest hotel there and it's the most prominent. Everybody goes there. 
it's like the is the best hotel in 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 Nigeria. So all the big people go there. So anyway, this hotel used to import their. Can you imagine it? Their coconut, cashew, everything they used to use, they used to import them. But this guy went. He he, he, he was look, looking for a way of making money. So he just went to that hotel and said, can I supply you anything? Then they told him and said, oh, do you know, we, we, we used to import uh, uh, what the granite, you know, ordinary granite. Can you imagine? But there is a ban or something in the something. So we want people to supply us with clean, good granite. We have granite, but they are not in commercial. They are not in the quantity that we want them. And they, we, they must not have those little stones that are always you always meet clean. So this guy, you know what he did? He didn't even have the thing. He just went and found some farmers, agreed with them, and started supplying this hotel. Right now, this guy is having 100 acres, I mean, is it 1,000 acres of land of his own granite? Just because he signed a contract with that uh, Nuga something hotel, no, Hilton something in Abuja, Hilton Hotel. Huh? Nikon, yeah, Nikon Nuga, yeah, they call it Nikon Nuga Hotel. In, Nikon Nuga, I know. Yeah, Nikon Nuga, I think, yeah, that's what it's called. So Nikon Nuga Hotel in Abuja, it's now this is the, their main supplier, and he can hardly make it. So from that one, when anywhere he goes to now in Nigeria, any hotel, and says, I supply Nikon Nuga, all the hotels want him to supply. So now he has land in his state, he has land in the many states, and he has employees just planting cocoa, I mean, uh, grand not alone. So I'm just looking at your own bath uh, bombs now, and your soap. I'm thinking, hey, they put them in those 5,000 hotels. Why don't you go and meet them and uh, reach an agreement like that? Yeah. It's one, of the, it's one of the moves that we are doing as well at present. Good. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, as I was saying, so um the the I want to also if they could show the video um where I was where I was extracting coconut oil coconuts <laughs> I went because I had to learn in a hot Father Sunday I went through a lot of learning in Nigeria I how long did you one. stay how, how you you have to pay a big price though so. I Father Sunday I normally stay in Nigeria three months. How many times a year do you go there? I travel two to three times a year. <laughs> and you stay there for three months? Yes. So I'm doing half in London, half in Nigeria, half in London, half in Nigeria. You are a hero. It, it, is, it has got so, to be. But you have three kids. Yes, sir. So your husband is, agrees to stay with the three kids? Yes, sir. It's what? a sacrifice we have to do together. It must be an unusual man. Yeah. Maybe that, I, don't, I don't want to be rude to any African man, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know, maybe... Maybe because it's not African. I don't want to say that. So. I don't want to say that. <laughs> but you are lucky to, to have such a husband to do that. I don't, want to I don't know how many African men who would do that. Mm. There, there, there's, there are, should be some. There are still more because every day that you will be going to Nigeria three times a year and staying there three months each time, and he will be staying with the three children at home yes, for sir. three months. Yes, because Would he had to resign his job when he goes to a point. We, he had to resign his job, and this is what we do for for a living now. So if we are selling one soaps now, it's putting food on our table. That's it. Wow. So that is what we do for a full time. So you job really now. believe in this vision? Pastor Sunday, there is no going back. This is the this is it. Is you know when you wake up some every day, that is what you think about, and you're seeing positivity. You're Please, seeing changes. Can we changes. have a contact? Do we have a contact? Because I'm sure that there are a lot of people who will be willing to buy your soap right now because they want something healthy and something yes. like uh, something organic yes yeah so you are telling us about the various products that you produce yes so 
the so you have the standard soap? Yes. Is it the black soap? No, the black soap is different. We have black soap. We have bar soaps. You have pictures of them? Yes, they, they, they are in some of the videos. Ah, in the videos. That's okay. The, um, the, second, the second video that I sent, which I think I said coconut oil, one of the videos. Coconut oil. Where Yes, where I was doing the coconut oil, I was Can we see the video where she was doing the coconut oil? Yeah. The video. I had to. So yeah, the bad bomb. The bad bomb is very bad bomb. Once the video is on, I will be able to explain the coconut the, the video. Okay. Where you are going there to? Is it is it on now, sir? No, it will because be I on. Can't see. The video will be on now. Okay. Do you know the video we are talking what? about? Is it this one? Yes, where I was do I was taking coconut oil out of the Is it where you are sitting that? down? Yeah, and I was taking coconut oil. Where it says um taking coconut oil out of the shell shell. It, okay, and you are putting it in a grinding like pepper yes. grinder. Exactly. Yeah, so that's I it. had to learn I had to learn in a very from the beginning. That was, you know, I had to learn the way is 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 done. That way. So we extract coconut oil like that so that we know we have 100% coconut. Coconut oil. Where do you get it? Is it from coconut? Yes. Coconut oil is it comes from coconut, real coconut. So what happens? So when, once you take it out from the shell, you blend it up and you extract it. You extract the oil. Yeah, you extract the oil. If you are doing it in a manual way, it's a, it's a long process. I just had to learn that. I taught my team so that I would be able to say, okay, if we don't have the machine, mm. this is the way to make coconut oil. So I had to, we had to do it in a manual way. That way, so so that even if I encourage them that. One day you also you could start your own company. You see where we are starting from. This is our coconut oil. So I train them as well. Our coconut oil. But is now toner. I'm seeing in the video some other modern technique, some modern me modern mechanics mechanism. You are it's like you you graduated from the way you did it in the with the hand, yes. manual to chemical mechanical or something. Yes, that is the machine that we are we are we are planning to get. That's the machine. Okay. Yes, so that's the machine we are going for now to be able to. Is it the big one, the big machine that is making the? We are, we are the, looking at something that's a, our previous factory or something. Well, that's the. I think that's a different. Thing. Mixing yes. tanks, mixing tanks and mixing machines. That's it. That's our old factory. That's how we started from. That's where we started. Okay. That's where we started. That's our old factory. And then we move to another place. So, are we? Um, so that's the coconut. Or that's how we make the. Is that in Nigeria or in Britain? No, that's Nigeria, person. That's Nigeria. Oh wow! So you are producing these things in Nigeria? Yes, sir. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> how did you get the technology? How did you come up with the technology to make it so beautiful like this? Especially these bath bombs. I I I went to to the course. So that's that's you see where the mold is, that's our mold. That's what we that's everything is organic, hundred percent handmade. Everything is handmade. And to be honest with you, in, in especially here in England, because I can't talk about any other country, here in London. We appreciate handmade stuff because it's unique. You know that okay, you're not adding any, you know, anything inside it that is not pleasant. So if you look into along the video, you see where we num we mold our bad bombs. Yes. We have the stainless. Yes, we have the stainless steel. So majority of what we use is stainless steel because if you are using any apart from stainless steel, they could react to chemicals and you know, um, other things that. Um, ions and things could go into our product, so we don't want any chemicals going into into the product. So majority of what we do is using stainless steel or full 
stainless steel. So, um, so from there, we are the first company, like I said, sir, to bring bad bombs into Nigeria. And why bad bomb is very good. So people in Britain now will not be able to buy your soap. Of course, we we buy what we do, sir. We do it in Nigeria and bring it here. Okay. So they are because, imported to England. Yes. Yes. Because if we are producing it here, we will not there's no space for it. The raw materials will be more ex, very 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 high. And majority of some of our clients, our customers that buy from us to, before, if they go to our website now or go to Amazon or any other places to buy our soap, they will see that our our product have now reduced. The because prices. Was a bit high before, sir? The prices have reduced. Yes, has reduced now because we are now manufacturing in a place whereby we will get raw materials. You know, in we we'll be we have more access to the raw materials, but we are buying it here. Is a bit expensive to produce after the production. We see I'm that seeing a video now with farmland and you know, it's too early to show the video. Yeah, it's too early. It's too okay, early. Okay, okay, okay. Nina the Pakaita video. It's too early. Okay. The the other okay, if you, you've seen the old factory, sir. Yes. And you've seen, seen the old the bad, factory. You've seen the bad bombs. You've seen the bad bombs. Yes. 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 So, like I was saying, I now had to learn how to do the coconut toy in a very that way. And if you look at the video as well, at the end of the video, you see the machine that makes our bass bar soap. Yes. Uh, no. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you saw that. So that's the that's the thing. Then now, now go back to Nigeria. People will keep on asking me that. Why do I left my comfort zone to go to back to Nigeria to go and? Yeah, start? that is a big challenge for a lot of us. A lot of people are afraid of going back to Nigeria. Yeah. Yes. So. My challenges, I, I, to be honest with you, Rome is not built in a day. I also face challenges. So and you are the one, I see and one where you is reading, training my team, soap making in manual way. Yes. That's me making, because I, I learned from those mamas. That's the way, if you look at the end of where I went to Africa, the mamas were handing some things like that. Yeah, I see you doing it now. Yes, I am now doing it because I'm showing... Because a leader has to show, you know, has to show example. When I want to be posh, I can be posh. But when I want to be real workaholic, I can also <laughs> be beautiful. You know, wow. You are, so you are so industrious. You are so industrious. So I'm showing the my team, this is how it is done. You know, so like I was saying, sir, the, the my challenges, what are my challenges? I face the first challenge that I will do, I will first and foremost, anyone that wants to start up a business in Nigeria, I would plead to you or advise you to try as much as possible to get a premises, if possible, a premises of your own. That is if possible. But if not, you can still start from somewhere. But because of my own experience, what I've went through, I went to a challenge with my landlord. I remember then when... If you look at the old factory, Pastor Sunday, you saw the video with the old factory. Yes. We were producing there, and then the agent that introduced me to the um, to to the land. I have never met the landlord actually. It's just I got the property through the agent. So the agent said to me one day that um, the property is up for sale. So my husband and I put an interest to it and said, okay, we want to purchase the property. So because we were renting the place at Fox, but they put it out for sale. So we, because being the, you know, the present tenant, we, they got, they considered us first because we became the first priority because we were there already. So they gave, they told us this is the price of the property. And we said, okay, this is the amount we're going to pay. And agreement was, uh, you know, agreed there. But all of a sudden, the, land, the agent called me back and said to me that oh, um, the ch prices has been changed. The landlord does not agree to the price anymore, that the prices has been changed. So I said, wow, 
I said to my husband, it was just a couple of thousands, even though it's not easy to get money like that. So my husband said, okay, we'll still agree because they saw the eagerness in us. That, that is one thing we are not supposed to expose ourselves for people to know the eagerness we want in something. Because we saw that even at the other side of the thing, there is other future development in the, in the property. So that was what we were looking at. And then because of this, they saw our eagerness, they saw what we are doing there and things like that. So they want to use that as an opportunity to exploit us. So we said, all right, no problem. We were still, we were still interested to buy the place. So we agreed again. So during the process, the vendor and us and we, the buyer, were doing the process of buying in and everything. The man came back the second time and said, oh, the price has been changed again. So I said, wow. Not again, they came the third time. After we accept the second time, now they came the third time and said the price has been changed. That was when my husband and I now pull out and said we are no longer interested because this is they are not a straightforward person. And we did we know we because they saw that the eagerness with us and they see what we are doing there. So that's why I'm advising people that if you want to stay up there's something good, don't start with your own place. Because that can because we, that place has been registered when we did the NAVDAC, that place was registered as the company with NAVDAC because we're going getting NAVDAC license and everything to sell the product. And that was what happened. So, but without knowing that, this man was pushing us to buy our own property. And if you can see in the video, there's a video there, our new, our new factory now. If they can show the new factory. Okay, in that same video? No, another video. I, I wrote our new factory in the video. There's okay. a new, our new factory. That's the so name our, of the video, our new factory. Yes, sir. So okay. the old factory now, we had to pull out from the cell. We had to pull out from the old... Okay, I see it now. The, yes, we had to pull out from the old one and then buy our own place. So... We even even when we bought this new place, there was a place they gave us before. These people also used, you know, fraud on me by selling me land, no land, no no money, no land. So <laughs> I end up um, being in another thing because there was no property now for us to start for us to be producing because after we the landlord said to us that the house is up for sale and we are not buying it again now they pull up the property price up the rent property up about 50 percent wow so there's no way we can be wasting money like that to be renting so we had to buy our own land so when we bought our land as well the lawyer my lawyer because i bought the land through my lawyer so my lawyer brought somebody to go and represent me there I didn't surface, I didn't want to show myself and things. So when the lawyer went, the lawyer's representative, my lawyer didn't go, which between my, myself and my lawyer, he didn't tell me he wasn't going to attend, but he sent his representative. So by the time getting there, his representative was, you know, you can't predict some people. He was bought, he was bought. So my lawyer have already warned me that before he will be able to release, I shouldn't release money yet till he gives me go ahead. So be, somebody, the, the right person I'm supposed to send the money to, the lawyer told me to send this to somebody else. So that was how my money got mixed somewhere. So now we are stuck, no land, no, no money. So from there, the community people came the community chief. So why couldn't you hold your lawyer responsible? Yes, I held him responsible. He needs to. So all the case was fighting and everything, and it got to the community. And the community saw what we were bringing to that a place because it's a development for them. There's also some other um, fact factories and industry at that area as well. So because they see that we are also bringing something there, especially being a soap. Everybody uses soap. So they see that that is one you're going to create jobs for people around there. So they had to come. And I believe that it is a favor of God because I don't know these people from Jack Adam. I don't know them, but they just stood by me. They stand for me and they were able to help me to fight. Even though my money is still out there, but they gave Up us... Up to now, land. he has not returned it. They have not returned it, but they gave us a land. 
So what, what, did, you take, did you take the lawyer to court? Yes, my lawyer and everything, uh, they are still in the case now. But in order for us not to be stuck in that place, I have to keep moving. Because whatever challenges come to me, I always fight it and I, I solve the solution out. But they said they will, they will get the, the money for me. But in the agreement, the, the land that I wanted to buy, because then that we started, we wanted to buy the land, they were giving us one plot, two plots here, three plots here, but we wanted something big because we are going to do something more. So we wanted about two acres of land. And because we were not able to get it in one place, but the only place we were able to get it was where they did some that for us. But the community now got up now and, you know, God used them and they gave us another land. So that is where we build that place now. So that has been resolved. But they promised that they're going to get my money back. Even though they don't get the money back, but we've gotten the land even more cheaper and less, you know, money compared to what the other opponent wanted to sell for us. So, so you have to fight corruption every way. Every way, yes. Every day you have to so fight you, corruption. So what are the challenges you encounter work, going back to set up a business in Nigeria? Yes, so, so that is part of my challenges. Corruption. Corruption, sir. People who are not people who are not straightforward. Yes. Deceptive people. Yes, sir. Lack of trust. Yes. And everything I faced and I overcome them. So but I don't want to discourage anybody here because if I say one person do something bad, I don't want to paint everybody. They are good people in Nigeria, sir. They are also good people. The same way they are bad people in all over the countries, they are also good people as well. They are good people in Nigeria. It's not everybody that is bad. Because I work with good people and also bad people. So these are one of my challenges. My second challenge, Pastor, is workers. Sometimes workers are not trustworthy. They are not loyal. And I also face that. The, 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 what I faced with my law workers is that one of them, um, my PA, had an accommodation issue. And then he came to me and then said to me that, oh, he has an accommodation issue. Is there any way I could help him and things like that? But because I don't want to, because I've got rules and regulations, I don't want to be like, I'm the Messiah. I have to solve everybody's problems. And you have to have something, if, you know, tangible something that you need help for. So he came to me and said to me that because of his accommodation issue, I said, okay, that's fine. What do you want the company to do for you? And he said, he wants us to, he wants to take an advance payment to be able to get an accommodation. So when we said, okay, we would have to put this in writing. We're going to pay you advance payment and you're going to be paying us instrumentally when you get your salary. So that was signed and everything and everybody was happy. I came back to London and then the next thing, two weeks after I go back to London, the next thing I saw was he, re he resigned. He sent me an email that is resigning from the job. So I got betrayed. I got used. I got so ill because it was so painful. If you are trying to help somebody 25 years old, trying to help them, because if somebody, you know, having problems like that and you're, you're able to come out, because how many employers will be able to want to do that? So he took the money away. So I had to, um, I was calling him, he, he made me to, because he switched off the business line, he took off the keys and everything, he just, to the, and I kept calling him that, please, when are you going to, you know, can't you even just wait for me to come back and everything? So he started giving me attitude over the phone, I said, fine. So I had to go back to Nigeria, and then, um, so he, when I go back to Nigeria and I was calling him, I said, so are you coming now? Are you bringing my stuff? Are you the attitude and whatever? So I had to report him to my police friend. So if people think that there's no laws in Nigeria, there is some laws. Because if you go to the right ways of doing laws, justice will definitely there's justice in some parts. If you want to make sure you get to justice. So when they got him and they, you know, got him arrested, he, 
you know, just to cut the long story short, he was begging and everything, and he said his devil, like they always say, his devil's, his devil's work and things like that. And I said, look, you are not supposed to do that. I only try to help you, but you want to play smart. But between that, Pastor Sunday, I, there was a lot of resentment with me. People turned against me. Even families was like, oh, because of money, you're arresting somebody. But they didn't know the message I was trying to pass across. Because in life, you have to be loyal. You have to have discipline. You are not supposed to fraud people. Because you see that, that OK, this is an opportunity for you to quickly run away, to get somebody money. OK, that is a cool money. Because they, they call me JJC, Jolly Just Come, like they normally say in Nigeria, Mumu. Why should I give somebody a staff advance payment? But sometimes they do it here. You can get an advance payment here in, in England, and you could be but paid But did the guy return your money, the advance payment? Did he return it? No. Keep him in prison now. What's the problem? No, okay. You mean then or after we got him arrested? Of course. He, he, there was a lot of begging, and he begged and said, okay, please, because he didn't, you know, because he did not, um, he doesn't have money, and this, this, that, 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 that. And we just, you know, just got, but the pe message I was trying to pass across. So he returned so your money, your advance money. He did, I just had to let let it go for him. Because because of people who are putting pressure on you, all that, right? It's not because of, no, sir. It's not because, it was locked up. He was locked up. He should be locked up or the remain. It brings back the salary he took. Yeah, he was locked up. He was, <laughs> he was locked you up. Should, you should have still be there up to now as we are talking. He was locked up. They took his phone. They took his phone. So I don't know. Maybe they returned back his phone. But there was a lot. He, he got punishment for that. But the message I was trying to pass across, because some people in Nigeria, they don't believe in all these things. That, oh, she be in a, a small money. And I said to you, it's a small money or to me. If you don't have discipline, if you don't have discipline, you continue to do that. Because if he does that now, you will believe it's the normal thing. And he will do it to somebody else. And it is not all of us that have God's tough skin. Some of us may experience such thing now. And the next minute, they don't, they will say, oh, that is how everybody is. They will not want to, you know, try that to somebody else. And it will block other people's blessing. There is going to be the reason why there is perv uh, perv uh, pervasiveness of evil in Nigeria is because there is lack of penalty. Yeah. People are always saying, forgive, although let it go, forgive, have mercy, forgive. And that is why there is the culture has become like that. Yes. Do you know how many prisoners we have in Nigeria altogether? Huh? I know. I could help you. Okay. In that, the whole of Nigeria, a country of 200 million people, wow. we only have 75 or 72,000 prisoners. Wow. That is less than you have in the smallest state in the United Kingdom. Wow. 72,000. 72,000. Only 72,000 in the whole of Nigeria. Wow. Where there are millions in other countries. Why? Because everybody is saying, let it go now. Don't let... Mm. It's the all, the all, one of the smallest number of people, ratio-wise. I mean, one of the smallest amount of prisoners in Nigeria is because there is no judicial system. Of course. They are not sending anybody to jail because, I mean, only... The only people, those 72, 75 people is, are the, mainly the people either who killed people or who did some very big crime or who some big mo madam and big uh, big men locked up because they offended them. Otherwise, yeah. the, all these kind of people, they, are, they belong to prison. They shouldn't even work among people. And because there are no prison systems like that, nobody is jailing anybody, that's why everybody is a criminal and they are walking around and you are thinking you are dealing with normal people. Of course. And that was what I was, the message I was trying to pass across to, to, to everybody. That oh you, you life is not supposed to be like this. He has to face consequences of what he impunity, has done. Impunity, impunity is that I will never be punished for anything. So impunity will continue, and it will be pervasive if people are not punished for their uh, for their, their evil. Yeah.
And that was what I was trying to pass across that. It's not that um, I didn't even... I didn't even care because I don't like to please man. Sometimes you just, I'm, in, I'm pre, you know, I don't want to say, okay, oh, because people would say, oh, I'm a bad person, but I just had to let them lock him up. They took his phone and everything. It, nobody showed up for him. Nobody showed up. So they were locking up. If not that, that other, that my, um, there's a lawyer person that now came and now, Lawyer, lawyer was there as well. The case was done, and he said, okay, what do you want now? And things like that. And the lawyer said, look, this guy is guilty. Do you, are you guilty or not? How do you want to be paying this money instrumentally? There's no job. There is nothing. So how do you want to be paying the money back? Because I want my money back. So he said, there is no way he's going to pay my money. But just for, for me to just... He's already been punished anyway, because I've passed the message across. Don't think you can do it to everybody. You cannot do it to everybody. You must pay You must pay for anything wrong you do. You must pay for it. And I think they took his phone, and I said to them, look, they sort, let, just sort him out. I, I've passed the message I want to pass to him. I've passed it to him. They lock him. I think I can't even remember how many days they lock him up. I just I don't want to hear about it. They took his phone, but I know that. He faced a lot of a lot of a lot of problems before he was finally released. But I just said, just just take the money because the mother called me, and my brother, you know, called me, and everybody was like, whatever and things because it even caused a lot of problems within my family, you know. And I didn't care about that, but the message I wanted to pass across, I was able to pass across to it. And also with um drivers my driver they also the same you know do the same thing so i've passed through a lot of challenges which i overcome what did the driver do the driver my driver that one is more of like the fetish whatever you know sometimes they believe that oh if they do some fetish um, whatever because they don't know sometimes god will live inside some of some people is greater than their own whatever fetish things that they're doing. They'll be putting some rubbish things so that, because it's the one who drives my husband's tanker. My husband supplies um, diesel to some of the hotels and banks and things like that. So in order for you, they believe that they get the, jo the job. In order for them to keep the job, because they get a lot of money from this thing, in order for them to keep a job, they would think they can do fetish things and then keep the fetish whatever in the car. And then that day, I think the supervisor was just going in through the vehicle, and then he saw those things that he was done. I said, what was this? And he called me. I came to inspect that, and I saw they took um, like a broom or something. <laughs> they took broom, and I was like, what's this? I don't believe in all this. Thing. So I just set it ablaze and burn it, and that was it. And um, it was changed. We got another process. I was like, Ellie, I had to preach to him. Did your fetishness held your job, it didn't help your job. He even put you into more wahala, like I would say. You move into, into more wahala. I told you, if you're working for me, you want to be part of my team. I don't mingle myself in fetish thing. It is only God who I, you know, serve. So you can't mix fetishness with me and with, you know, with God. So that was how he lost his job. And then the mechanic one, the mechanic was like, oh, madam, I change your vehicle this this that because some of our nigerian people they think that oh um you have to be luxury you have to be you know show off did 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 i said i should buy a new car so that i'll be able to show that i said what am i showing if if i if for me to be able to buy vehicle vehicle that is taking me from a to b why should i have to change it i don't need to change my vehicle if I have the money now, I can't afford it. If I have the money now, I would rather invest it in my business than change it. But I discovered that what you've been teaching me, what you've been teaching us, I'm impacting it also into their life. I start to change their mentality as well. I start to change their orientation. It is not about everything. It's about buy, I mean, buy, buy this. You don't need, you don't, you don't, money is not meant to be spent. You need to know the laws of money. So I was telling him, I don't need it. 
my vehicle is is not there's nothing wrong with it you are the one servicing it when i'm whenever i'm not here you're the one servicing it why do i need to change it so i have to change their mentality as well and with my so things like that to the uh, electricity how did we overcome electricity i'm just giving the challenges that i went through yes how did you overcome the electricity challenge the electricity after we build our new place because the old place there was there was a pro light issue constant generator so we had to in we have to introduce solo pa solar power into um uh, into our factory so the solar power is what is carrying majority but how many investors do you have what, to do all this as a sunday right now we don't have any investor that has invested in our business it's just myself and my husband and all the savings we've saved and then we put it there but now it's where we've got to a point that we've started in our little way is growing now we want to mass produce the product so that when we buy a lot of ingredient now we'll be able to mass produce and using the best organic which we can get in nigeria we must produce and we'll be able to you know, doing a very large quantity, we can, you know, doing a large, very large quantity like big boys, like we used to call them, do it. Because you have the market, even in Nigeria alone, 200 million people is one, is like four times the, or two, even in Nigeria alone, it's like two or three times the market of England. Yes, exactly, sir. Yes. So we have the so, market, and then you can still bring to Europe. Yes. Because we're already selling it here. We have it in Amazon. We have it in, there's um, GG have our product. They have it in, um, what's it called, the Jumia. There's some, um, uh, what's it called? Um, some chemists collect it as well. Some chemists collect it in, in stores in Nigeria. We have some here on our high street here in England as well. This, they have, they are carrying it as well. They have them. We have them in on our website as well. So is a soap you cannot lost in soap making. Is a is a how much investment will you need right now to take your business to the next level? Right now we need at least hundred and twenty thousand pounds to be able to buy the machine, the big machine that you saw in the video, to be able to buy this machine to mass produce. You know, so that we can ship it out there. Just keep shipping it out there, and you know, we 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 are already we are working so hard. Even the little way we are doing it right now, we are working so hard to do at least, even if it's as 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 much as two hundred and fifty thousand per month. That is in the bars. So we are capable of doing that two hundred and fifty thousand in single handedly two hundred and fifty thousand bars in a month because we have the land for it we have the factory for it so it is just machinery. and what is the amount you are making now right now we are we we are making is it on a monthly basis yes or, or monthly basis daily? monthly the monthly basis um let me just let me bring the paper on a now i will just do it in the um because we no, have because you month. said you said that in a month you could you have the capacity the possibility of making up to 200 and that is, yeah. that is if we have the machine yeah if you right have the machine you'll be able to make 250 a month we'll be able to yes but so we'll but how make. much without the machine how much can you make now without the machine without the machine we i just want to see how many times will it increase your productivity right now we we are not in that high because it's manpower we are using now okay so but this yeah. will increase you many times quicker it will and we have the plan business plan for for three years okay so the if anybody day, so if anybody will invest what because i'm sure that some people are listening now that might be interested you know but they will have good returns right that's what you are saying Yes, sir. Good return. Yes. But it, it, sometimes the most important thing is not the production, but even the, but the sales. Do you have the market for these things? Yes. yes. We have strategy to get this, all, this, all this product out. 
we've already strategized how we're going to get our product out. Right here in the UK, what they are saying to us is that if we enter into a contract, there's people there to collect it straight away. Wow. Yes. There's distributor here. To, there's distributor here. There's distributor here to collect the soap straight up. Straight up like that. So it's just for us to, because if we go now and say to them that, oh, we have products, but we cannot meet the demand, then they will take us on serious. So if we can get the investment, we'll be able to mass produce, uh, you know, and then start getting it out. We don't want to go in there and sign a contract and say, supply me. And then there is no way we'll be able to meet the demands because the extra money is not there. It's just me and my husband and our savings that we've put into how we are now to because our building when we we build the factory and that has really eaten to our money so we want to make it big to be able to push it out even in nigeria to be able to push it out there to 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 start producing and that's and that's it so we've conquered majority of the things that we want to challenge in nigeria we've conquered the electricity like i said there will be no electricity that's why we didn't go on to the grill which is the nepa because NEPA is one of the things that could cripple business in Nigeria. And because we don't want to fail in this business, we did not go on to NEPA. We did not go into NEPA because let's assume now that we are making one million naira in a month. And NEPA is bringing a crazy bill for about 800,000 naira. That's a crazy bill. So that's why we don't want to go into grill. So we, we decided to go solar panel. We have a backup generator as well. So those are the things that is generating electric for us. We didn't go on to NEPA because NEPA could cripple your business. So we didn't go through, we didn't go on to NEPA. It is just solar. So there is nothing, um, we, we have business with NEPA or that will stop our business because we were doing that in the other place and it's slowing down our production, it's slowing down what you're doing. But we were able to get rid of NEPA and then now we are on our own with no grid. So that is how we conquer the NEPA. And another challenge that I went through in Nigeria is the movement. Now I, I know what time we can maneuver in Nigeria. We know the time. Even if we are supplying our customers, we know when our drivers have to come out. We know when they, are, where they have to supply our customers. We play along. So every situation we find ourselves in Nigeria, we're able to meet it. We're able to work with it. We're able to learn learn to adapt to this, to this system, to the, to the system of how whatever challenges we are going through in Nigeria. So um, you said you have some other plans, some other products you still you would like to release in future. What are some of those? Yes, um, in um, in future we want to also go into um, creams as well. We want to go into creams, making creams, especially sun cream. Majority, I want to orientate Nigeria, and that is why we will be also getting a school, uh, natural skincare school as well that is in few very soon by god's grace we'll be able to also get the school we have the land for it so everything is in one place because our land is very big everything is in one place we'll be also be able to encourage we'll start getting them from young to be able to capture them from young teach them how to make soaps how to make creams how to make lotions how to make sh uh, shampoo so many things. So we are bringing creams, also bringing creams in future. You know, so those are one of the, those are also part of our plans we want to bring up into, you know, into our, to, just to expand our brand and gradually it's, it's becoming known for those who appreciate it. Even. So you want to say something? Sir? Yes, I wanted to say that in the UK, for you to be able to sell your products. Because a lot of people who live in the UK even and produce something, they said yeah. that there is such a long process of getting permission for them to be able to sell anything. Talk less of bringing it. They even told me, some people even told me, if you bring anything from Nigeria, forget it. You will never get certificate for them. 
you will never be able to, because the stores will not receive those things from you to sell without a right. UK license or UK number or UK permission or something like that. Yeah. Two things, two things that I we did. First was the stability testing and also yeah, stability testing and mm. safety and treatment testing here in the UK. So you have to set test your product in order to be able to sell it out to the consumers. Without you having that permission to sell them, you cannot sell it. And also, immediately you, are sent, you have a product you want to sell, you need to register it as well. That you have a product in the UK that has been in the UK to, to sell. And the more reason why, because even my lecturer did say it as well, that majority of things coming from Africa, they don't like taking it. And this is the reason because I also had to go to Nigeria, like I said to you, sir. I went to go and learn the African black soap. I also went to go and learn how they make the, you know, the liquid soaps. But I discovered that it's because they don't know. There is no hygiene. That is one thing I want to also bring to them. They don't know hygiene. They don't know how to test pH level of product. So obviously, if you are not representing yourself, representation, presentation is the key. If you don't present yourself properly, your product, because I could guarantee you, sir, like I said, when I, we are doing all these things in our lab, they are doing the pH level and all those things, people will be looking at me. Hygiene has to be top notch. It has to be, you, you know, you have to be cautious of those things. So the pH and everything, we did all those things here. Now, another thing is for you to have a license now to import it to the UK. You so those are the things. If people are saying that, I don't know where they, they went to, but if African people, if we can be representing ourselves, it, 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 may, it makes me to remember this, that when I was in Nigeria as well, sir, our brand, I don't know if I could, if I have it here. Okay, this is one of our brand here. I, I took it to one of the shops in Nigeria, a very popular shop. Every Nigerian who is watching me now, they will know it, they are called ShopRite. You see this brand, sir, when I got there, they said to me that, I, this, the guy got intimidated by the packaging alone. And he's saying that, oh, how much, without even giving me the chance to explain myself, to tell him, it was not expensive because I see some stuff that is not as well as this. It is not about the packaging alone. It is about the what is inside it. So he thought that, okay, it's because of the, oh, you are selling packaging for us. Oh, this. He didn't give me the chance because he got intimidated by just the packaging. So some people will be, will be telling me that, oh, why don't I write made in UK, made in America? I say, why should I do that? This is made in Nigeria. So who am I promoting? Am I promoting another country or I'm promoting my country? So if we are, if presentation is the key, because if they don't collect, if you are importing something from, from, from Africa, if it's not properly done or if they are not, if you don't do your testing, you don't do all those things, obviously they will not appreciate what we have, because they'll be thinking it's not hygiene enough, it's not good enough. And this man that I was telling you is, is a typical African person. He's telling me that, oh, because he got just intimidated, he's thinking that, oh, it's, got, it's going to be expensive. He did, without giving me the chance. So people who, who appreciate it, they did collect it. And people who is using it, because they know that it is, it is a good stuff. It is not about the packaging alone, but I just need to pass a message to say things are also be made in Africa in a very inter international way as well. That is the message. Forget about the packaging, it is the content inside. Have you used it? Do you know what it, it is? So don't get intimidated by, okay, it is the packaging, okay, it's going to be expensive. It is not. I see some things, soaps in Nigeria, that cost as, as expensive as 8,000 8, 8, 8, 8, but if you go to stores, if you go to stores, Nigerian stores, on Jumia, you could sell, you could get a soap as cheap as now. I don't know how much the Jumia will put on top of it because they normally put their commission on top of it. But right directly from us, it's just is a, is I think the big one is um two thousand naira or so. Wow. And this can yeah. last for this. So it's a lot inside. This is big. Yes, because we have two sizes. We have the three. We have the three 
fifty, three hundred and fifty grams. We have the four hundred and fifty grams. So if you can see, they are not really. The, if you can look at it, they are not much different, but they are not the same sizes. Yeah, but so it's a lot. It's a lot inside. So for that lot, price, inside. it's a lot. It's a lot. So if we African can be, you know, representing ourselves, representing our culture, because this is this is this is originated from Africa. So if people saying that oh they are not collecting the soaps, they are not doing because I will hear some people say oh the packaging is too much. Ah, killer, what did you put inside in Europe? But what did you put inside? Why are you putting it? It is not about the thing. It is about the content inside. How am I going to represent my own race? That we also can do things in a match the international way. Not that just carrying one plastic and just dump the stuff there. Because even when I went to one store here, popular store here in London, um, open market here in London, the guy said, wow, this is African black soap. I said, yeah, I said, wow, this is very, in a very professional package. Because they don't, exp they don't believe that African people can think like that to match the thing. So whoever is looking at this, they get, they could only just get intimidated. You understand, sir? So it is us, we African, we have to promote ourselves. We have to promote ourselves and make believe in what we are doing, believe in ourselves. Beautiful. So. <laughs> wow. So also the NAVDAC as well. I don't know if there's time as well. I also went through NAVDAC, NAVDAC as well. Before before NAVDAC. you before you tell us about the NAVDAC, I want to find out if there will be people who would like to call into the program. Maybe they want to call to ask you some questions or to just tell you some encouraging words or say anything. So I want to find out if there's anybody that might want to call, uh, please go to Facebook Messenger, look for Move Agents and uh, Move Agents Madik and uh, just, um, you know, and just, 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 and my budget is going down. Yeah, so um people and another show sweeter is enough. So if you want to call, please uh, go to Facebook Messenger, look for Move Agents Magic and write us and send us a message that you want to call and we will call you back. Uh, so that you know we'll hear what you are thinking about uh uh, what you've been hearing from Nikki today. Okay, yes, Vanna. Yes. Uh. So, yeah, tell us about the NAV that only you have moved your, your, your camera okay. somehow. No, I wanted, yeah. to get, I wanted to get my charger because my battery is gone. Have you put the charger there? Can I quickly go upstairs to get the Ah, okay, okay. Is he, is he all right, sir? No, no, I will, no. Yes, is you, you can go. You, you, can, you, can, go you can, can go now. You can go now. So I also want to tell you about this book that you have here, The Secret of Fruitfulness. That's my latest book. And it's, uh, it's just like what we are talking about right now. Uh, these people decided to be fruitful rather than just working for Uncle Sam, rather than just staying in England and just working and working and paying bills. They decided to be fruitful and that's where their destiny is. And you know, for most of us, if we look very well, we'll be able to see things we could do in Africa that will bless Africa and bless the world. The second book that I have there uh, is called Raising the Next Generation of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. This is the way to raise up the new generation of uh, businessmen and new generation of uh, entrepreneurs who are Christians and who are Africans. So this is what, exactly what we see uh, Nikki do. She is the, one of those new generation of uh, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. This is the beginning, and in the next 10 years, you'll be surprised. She'll be, she'll be an international brand, so especially because of the product she has, that is natural and organic. The whole world will be looking for her products very soon. So if you want to join her, it's better to join her right now when they are in the beginning. Later on, they will not need you. And of course, the next program there is, I mean, the next uh, book there is The Creative and Innovative Power of a Genius. This book, the, the Creative and Innovative Power of a Genius, and it's all of us are genius. Just to tap into your creativity, they are tap into your ingenuity. We all could be genius in our own way. Tap into what God has already put in you. 
Okay, so tell us about the NAVDAC experience. How did you get that permission? Right. NAVDAC, my challenge with NAVDAC was I remember the lady, they introduced me to this woman. Then I was here. Because without selling products in Nigeria or taking it out of Nigeria as well, without having a NAVDAC number, it's not possible. So they introduced me to this lady and she promised to help me do the process of the thing. So she charged me, I think, about 500,000 naira. So we agreed on the price without knowing. So I called her and I said to her that, okay, I'll call you in two or three days later to to arrange how we are going to pay the money. So I didn't call her. Then she called me and she said to me, um, I told her that I was going to call her. Why did I call her that? Uh, that she has used her children's school fee to pay for, for me to, you know, for the things. So I said, that's not true. Why would you, and that sounds irresponsible, why would you use your children's school fee to apply for a woman you don't know? You just barely know me. You just, you just, you know, somebody just introduced you to me. You cannot jubilize your children's future and say you want to use your money to, which I know it wasn't true. But that had to happen in order for me to learn, to go and learn how they get an AFDAC license. So is anybody watching me today, if you want to get a NAVDAC license, I have become a consultant as well. So I know every secret about everything because you have to go through things in order for you to know that. So after the lady bust herself, or did I say I bust her bubbles by telling her that I'm no longer interested for her to do it, I have to do it myself so that I can learn. Until I discovered that I also have a family in NAFDAC that is there. But Pastor Sunday, they were so, so hard on me. Because sometimes you think, okay, because um, you have somebody in NAVDAC, you be, but they become even harder for me. When we wanted to set, when we wanted to have, um, register here in London, get the stability testing and also safety assessment here, it was very straightforward. There was no, it's just all over the uh, typing, you just send your, uh, your thing to the lab, they test it, they bring the thing back. It was very straightforward. But in Nigeria, it wasn't that straightforward. So I kept going. I mean, as I would wake up as early as six in the morning. I would not go to bed till about twelve a.m., one a.m. Because why? All the things that we are doing, how we do our product, you know, all the SOPs and how we product, how we do our product, we write them down. The same way they say they are following UK standard, but they make it so difficult for us. So anytime we take it back there, it's always it's always rejected. Because we did not, because they said to me that their, um, NAVDAC has their own format, the way they do their own format. So we had to go all the way, chunk out the ones we've already printed off, we've already typed off. We have to retype them back because they have a format of doing it. So I was able to learn everything about NAVDAC, how it's done. And this, I was doing it myself. I didn't have to send anybody to do it. I have to send myself. I have to go myself to be able to learn. You have to have a premises. Without having a premises, you cannot get a laugh dark license. And I think we, you need, it doesn't have to be big, according to what they say. It doesn't have to be big, you understand. But you need to have maybe about five, you know, rooms for you to, you know, there is the production, the, the, the cloak room the production room, the packaging room, and the finished product. You understand? So all those things I was able to learn. Because if I didn't um, say to the woman that I'm no, I will not be able to know all these things. So in future, if I want to register other stuff in future, I know where and what to do to be able to assess, to be able to do all these things. So I was glad that I did not give her the money. And even though it wasn't as expensive as that, and that was another thing that I found out, that it wasn't as expensive as the half a million she was trying to charge, to charge me. So it is not it is not so hard. So I'm not trying to discourage anybody here. If you want to go get an AFDAC number, it is advisable to do it. Because it will even make you more, um, it will Conf even make your product to stand out. Yes. To, to, to stand out that you, you're registered because they test, they test this product as well. 
And because I know there are a lot of dodgy people as well, they sell products without registering it here in the UK and here in, also in Nigeria. So you have to do all those things because what if you use a product and then people get um, problems with their skin and things like that? So you have to secure yourself to be able to know, to be able to um, do all these things. You have to follow the rules and regulation of producing in Nigeria. And I think. I was able to I was able to conquer that as well. So another thing that I like to say as well is if you want to set up a business in Nigeria, make sure you are on the ground. I am talking out of experience. Don't say you are telling somebody go and help me to start a business because I've been there as well. I rely on people. I will send this. Okay, do this for me. Do that for me. And to be honest with you, it's always coming to disaster. It's never, it will, it's never work. It's never, never work. So you have to be on the ground. Learn, because I know it's very hard. It's, I'm not going to lie to you. It is hard. It is not, it is not easy thing. But if you have a tough skin, you, you, this is, it's also interesting. It's not, I, Nikki, I, I, Nikki, I think we have a caller. So let's hear the caller with them. Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening, Nikki. Good evening. Who is calling, please? Ah, uh, this is Vicky from Belgium. Oh, <laughs> Nikki and Vicky. So yeah. this, this is Vicky from, from Belgium. Vicky. Yeah. Uh, just Are you hearing to... us, Vicky? Nikki? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. No, I can't hear the caller. Okay, can you go here. Put You have earphone, earphone. Wear that earphone. That will bright up near you. Go and pick your yeah. earphone. Yes, put your earphone and plug it. You can hear okay. the caller through the earphone. All right, so let me get it quickly. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, okay. Yes, go ahead, Nikki. I'll be Vicky. Yeah, thank you for bringing her online. You know, I love to support uh, you know very courageous women and business uh, women like me. Yeah. You know, so like you said, it's not easy to 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 go from here and start a business in Africa, most most of the time they will frustrate you because yes. you tried that before. So you end up like they are just feeding their say while you are struggling here and bringing money there. And when you just left, they will just do what is in their mind. And like she said also, the packaging is not only in Nigeria, I just want to tell her. It's the same thing here because when you, when as a black person, when you try to do something here in a different way, you know, in a very standard, the normal way that it's supposed to be, most of our black people will just look at you like they will not come and patronize you. It's, they won't patronize you because it's like you are too much for them, you are too packaging. Even if you are even cheaper than those ones that are less, you know, that it's less packaged, they will not just give you a chance of even support you or even, you know, be proud of you, which is it's a very bad attitude. It's a bad attitude. So I think she she truly tried a lot, and um, I'll be listening to her. I love her encouraging. I love what she's doing, and I would like to inbox her. So I hope uh, she's I not. Her that she's she has, um, she's she has an unbroken spirit. She's not allowing yeah. herself to be discouraged by all these situations she feels in Nigeria. Yeah, because she knows what she's worth and she knows what she wants. You know, that is different, it is, you know. Like when I start my tour, it's everybody discouraged me. I know what I, what I want, I know what I can deliver. So you wouldn't even listen to anybody who wants to discourage you, you know. So it, because the vision, she has that vision, is there. And she believes in it. So, so most of the time, if you are waiting for somebody to support us, in any good thing we want to do, you wouldn't go that person to support you. Just have to keep, you know, believe in yourself and in God, and just keep on fighting. That is just it. Because nobody, most of us, most of us, most of Africa, most of us, nobody will clap for you when you are doing good thing. Nobody will say, "Oh my, you are nobody." Believe me, I've been to that. No, that but thing. but me, I'm clapping for her because I'm seeing beyond what you, 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 beyond you know this. You're in Nigeria now. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about we are talking about typical, you know, typical. You are not a typical, you understand me? So we are talking of typical. Me, I'm clapping for her. That is why I'm calling in. You know? I love her spirit. I want to chat with her. I want to really to chat with her. You know, I want to connect with her. That is why I'm not just calling into this program, but I'll I'll definitely chat with her because you know it's my kind of you know 
I'm into business too, so I love business. So it's, it's my chance. So. Because I'm seeing beyond this beginning, I'm seeing a big industry, cosmetic industry, beauty yeah, industry, that there will be a big beauty a cosmetic industry from this multinational that will take go to all over, not just Africa, but all over the world. Yeah, of course. You see, because you are, if you are business oriented and you give a chance, and you don't just see how it started, you know, from nobody. You just look far. You see what he, I mean, what she's trying to do, you know. So, so it we. I mean, I think she will succeed. Everything will work fine. You just, just patience and just continue pushing that she's pushing. So, for those who believe and for those who watch this video, who want to also to, you know. To have to do something with her, why not? Why not? You always have to grab the chance in life. You know, you don't know any any opportunity that comes your way. You don't know where it will lead you to. You want to try business. It's try. You know, that is life. If you are scared. You you just stay where you are. You remain there. That is it. You just have to think. Thank so, you so much, Vicky. Thank you for I calling. That's a great encouragement for yeah, for Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God bless. God bless you, Nikki. Bye. Leave us her. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's our, uh, uh, that is uh, Vicky from Belgium calling to encourage you for what you are doing and uh, admiring your personality actually more and uh, being encouraged that she also, she would like to talk and connect with you uh, because she's a businesswoman as well. And so uh, she's saying that you have been able to overcome, you are not being discouraged, you are not allowing anything to stop your vision. And, uh, but I think we have another caller, so we're going to uh, see who the other caller is. But people, people are seeing what you are doing, and I think it's an example for a lot of us in diaspora to be able to go back and uh, begin to do something and create something so that we don't just die here like slaves that have been used paying bills, paying bills for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and then just die off. And then you leave your children here in Europe, they will keep on paying the bills that you didn't complete payment. And then they will keep on suffering too, struggling. They will never have anything to be their own. Uh, I think we couldn't get through to all the other people who are trying to call. So let me get back to uh, Nikki. What would you like to say before we go? To people who are watching us. What I would like to say to everyone watching us today is, number one is, I would like to encourage everybody, try to take good care of your skin. Skin is very important. Know what we are applying on our skin on a daily basis. Don't say because, oh, I just want to use soap. Let me just go there and go and take soaps and things like that because I could proudly say I use African black soap. How many manufacturers would use the same product that you are using? I don't think they don't. I may be selling myself. Yes, I am selling myself. I use the product that I make. That is the product that I use. And the, all of my families come from, from, from our hair. I don't go out there to buy any product anymore. I use my own product. So please try as much as possible to use good product. Use just so stay away from chemicals. Stay away from chemicals because it's not doing our our skin good. Please go and read sodium lorraine sulfate, like I said earlier. Sodium lorraine sulfate, go and read this. It's not a good substance, and this is what they use to manufacture our soap every single time. That is what they use. And another thing that I would also like to say is that whenever you are going out, make sure you wear sun cream. Don't say, okay, um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a Melanie. I, I don't need sun cream. We do need sun cream. And that is what I also want to enlighten Africans as well, especially Nigeria, before we start moving to other countries. Always make sure you use sun cream. Yes, we need vitamin D in our, in our body, but excess of it is it, it, damaging. So we please well, let us know what we are using. Try as much as possible. Also, the water we use to take our bath as well is very important. Just go to the buy what they use in testing pH level of water. And I'm also going to teach people in Africa as well. How do you check your pH level of the water you're using? Because also sometimes our water here, most especially some areas in London, is a bit too harsh on our skin. So sometimes this also happens on our skins and then you, we, we, 
things. And another thing that I also want to, to say is we should also watch what we are eating, what our children are eating, because these also constitute to the problems of the skin we are using, skin um, that we are using skin. The thing we are applying our skin, the food we eat, the water we are drinking. And also, do anybody who wants to set up a business in Nigeria, don't be discouraged. Africa is the Africa is the place to set up things. I have overcome all the obstacles. There is no stopping me because I am a woman. No stopping me. I am very. My husband will say you have a lot stuff skin. So please don't be discouraged. If you have a business, don't put your money sitting down there and it's not. Play. Think about your children, about the future. What are we building for our future? And I learned a lot of this by Pastor Sunday. It's not about. Um, um, going to parties or having nice vehicles or having house is more than that. And I learned from this man, please, whoever wants changes, because I, I had to um, lock myself away because everything that I learned from Pastor Sunday, I wanted to bring results. I don't want to now, because I told my husband one day, I said, if you listen to this man, Genuinely, people who want the truth, and I'm sorry if I'm pointing, I'm being passionate now. If you are people who love the truth and you've been listening to Pastor Sunday, you will never go back to the same after listening to him. And I said to my husband that if I don't change or if I don't change my will, bring result for this man, then I need help. I need help and I need help. There is nobody that can even help me more. Again, without, if, I listen to Pastor Sunday and I don't change. Please, if you have a passion about something, please go for it. I beg you. Don't be discouraged. Nigeria is not a, don't listen to social media that Nigeria is a bad, but it is. It has its way. I've been living here all my life, but I still went to Nigeria and I faced all the challenges that I have to face and I overcome them. So I'm encouraging you today, please. Don't give up in Nigeria. Nigeria will be great again. And I guarantee you that I've been in Nigeria. If you want to, to, to say something, please look at Africa. Africa is the place. People are going there to do something. What about me? What about you that you're an African person? If other races are going to Africa, to see the goodness in Africa, taking things from us, taking things in Africa, they see the uniqueness we have. What about me? I mean, if African woman, Africa is good. Africa is great. And we will overcome all the bad names they've given us over the years. We will overcome. And the changes start from me and it start from you. So start changing your world and go for your passion. Go for it. And that is all I have to say today. Wow. What a woman. What a woman. You are going to be one day nominated as an awardee in one somewhere, somewhere. I don't know, but you are going to be recognized very, very soon. And I Amen. pray that God will bring that investment that you need as fast as possible and so Amen. that this thing we could just go global. Thank you for Amen. coming today and greet your Amen. wonderful husband and your children. And I'm Amen. sure a lot of people will be getting in touch with you after, after today. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Take care bye -bye. of yourself. Good luck. Bye.